kids. Happy Sunday. I'm so excited to see you today. I hope you enjoyed the sunny weather on Saturday. It was a little chilly. Definitely not warm enough to go swimming in a pool if you have one, but warm enough to spend some time outside, maybe helping with yard work or playing baseball or catch or frisbee or football or riding a bike and going on for walks. Lots of stuff we could do outside yesterday. What we are going to do first this week is we're going to read a story from the Bible, from the New Testament, called The Fruit of the Spirit. And the fruit of the Spirit is a bunch of things that we have inside of us that God gives us to be good and to be able to live nicely in community with other people, whether it be at home, at church, at school, at a play date, at the mall, at the grocery store, all those kinds of places, anywhere where we're with other people. So we're going to read this story. So remember, opening ears. Paul helped people understand how to live the way God wanted them to live. One time, Paul wrote a letter, remember we talked about letters last week, to a group of people called the Galatians. The Galatians had a new church and they needed lots of help. One of the problems they had was that they were always arguing. They fought and fought and fought about all sorts of things. The Galatians didn't always agree about what it meant to be a church and what rules to follow. They had a hard time getting along and it was getting in the way of making a good church. Paul wrote a letter to the Galatians to tell them to stop fighting. He had some great advice. To the Galatians, the letter said, I am so happy that you believe in Jesus, but all your fighting is getting in the way. You're not living the way the Holy Spirit tells you to live. I have a suggestion to try. Instead of living like you are, Live with the fruit of the Spirit in mind. So love, joy, peace, and patience to one, or one another. Be kind, generous, and faithful. And remember, be gentle with one another and always show good control. Live with the fruit of the Spirit in mind. That's the way the Holy Spirit wants you to live. Does the Holy Spirit also want us to live that way? Mm -hmm. So not only is Paul telling the Galatians it, but we can learn from that too, that that's how God wants us to live. The Galatians looked at each other. They were very quiet. Paul was right. They weren't living the way the Holy Spirit wanted them to. What were they thinking? All this fighting was just not right. At the end of his letter, Paul wrote, the way for you to get along and be a church to let God's love fill you. May the grace of God be with you. Paul. Oh. Kind of the end of his letter. And afterwards, each day, the Galatians tried to remember the words of Paul's letter. They said, yes to peace. No to fighting. Yes to kindness. No to anger. Yes to being generous. No to being greedy. And little by little, the Galatians laws. The Galatians saw God's love and showed it to others. They felt loved by God and they loved each other. Okay, well, Wednesday at Soul Troop and Faith Corps, I talked a little bit in my email about bickering. And bickering is kind of just when you argue just a little bit back and forth about things that really don't matter. Like maybe someone in your house spilled the milk. Does it matter who spilled it? No, nope. what should we do? clean it up. But instead of getting right to it and just helping each other clean up, the kids are like, you spilt it. You spilt it. I'm telling mom, blah, 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 blah. That's what kids do. You know, if you have brothers or sisters, right? Or have cousins that you celebrate time with or friends, even grownups kind of bicker with one another too. So we talked about bickering and this is what they were doing at the church in Galatians. And so Paul gave them all these things to help practice how to be with other people. So we're going to practice a few of them. We're going to talk about a few. 
And then I have an activity for you that um, you're going to work with your parents about how God grows these fruits of the spirit with you, within you. Okay, I should have said this at the very beginning. You all know I'm not talking about real grapes, watermelon, bananas, peaches, plums, and apples, right? No one thinks I'm looking at you thinking you're growing branches of fruit, right? Okay. Okay, good. We're all on the same page. <laughs> well, I'm going to read a couple things to you, okay? Because I have a good way to explain some of these things. And look. I have it all typed down, otherwise I forget what I'm going to say. You all know that. One of the fruit of the Spirit is peace. We can find ways to make peace among friends. Peace is solving arguments instead of getting all upset and bickering. We can also experience what the Bible calls the peace that passes understanding. It comes to us in the best and worst of circumstances. What are some examples? Well, helping to settle an argument among friends, choosing to pray to God and trust God instead of worrying all the time, right? Those are some good things like, I could choose to be worried about when I get to go hang out with my friends next, but instead I'm just going to, and I'm going to think I'm happy, I'm safe at home, to keep everyone and myself healthy. And I'm just going to kind of just pray, dear God, please help me find the peace of being at home and missing my friends. It's a good example. What other things can you make peace with? One more that starts with the letter P too is patience. Yeah. It's hard to have patience. You want something, you want it now. Sometimes even grown-ups want that. Like, it's like, oh, I'm going to get a new car in a couple months. I want it now, not in a couple months, right? Well, Christians, that's us, people who believe in Jesus, have been waiting for the return of Jesus for 2,000 years. Like I was not alive 2,000 years. Although my parents, my grandparents, my even my great grandparents were not alive a thousand years ago. Moses waited until he was 80 before he led the people out of Egypt. Jesus himself even had to be patient and wait until he was 30 to stop being a carpenter and to start a ministry. Patience is waiting for God's timing for things we want. So Maybe I want a new car. Maybe I would like a new pet. But now might not be a good time. So I have to wait patiently without whining about it. Right? Right? Without whining about it. Until everything kind of, come, kind of comes together. And that's like God being like, okay, things are better now. You can, you can go get what you would like. One more is called self-control, okay? Like, I have my own examples of this one. Like, you really want that last chocolate bar, but you know your brother hasn't had it, so what should you do? Not eat it and save it for him, right? Or I've had three handfuls of potato chips already, and I really want another. but it's not the healthiest choice. I'm not going to eat another handful. One of the proofs of God working in our lives is the ability to control our own thoughts, our words, and our actions, right? So I stop myself, in my examples, I stop myself from eating an extra snack to share, and then from eating an extra snack because it wasn't a healthy choice. There are lots of other ways we do self control, like if I had a little sister right now and she came in and knocked over my block tower, I'd be so furious. I'd want to like push her. But I have self-control in my body to know to keep my hands to myself. Right? Yeah. What are some way other ways we can practice self-control? Saying no 
like maybe you're out with your friends and they're like, let's cross the street without looking. Practice some self-control and say, no, I need to be safe and I need my friends to be safe too. So you're not going to let that happen. Or again, my little sister knocked over my tower and what do I want to do? I want to push her. I want to like make her pick it all up and yell at her, but I'm not. I'm going to. I'm going to tell her it's okay. I'm going to understand that she's little and I'm bigger. I'm going to have that self-control to not do something unkind back. You guys, those were great three fruits of the spirit that we talked about today. Peace, patience, and self-control. And the worksheet I'm sending you has a whole bunch more. And I want you to think how God makes that, those, happen with you. I miss you a ton. You have a grandma. Or you don't have a grandma. And you have a grandma or an aunt or a really nice grown up lady friend, right? Um, anyone who's a special lady in your life when you're a kid, wish them a happy Mother's Day. Tell them how special they are and all the things they do for you, right? And how much it feels good that they love you and you love them, right? And then in a month, we'll give those same wishes to the guys in our life, right? For Father's Day, right? Um, moms out there, happy Mother's Day. I wish you all a happy Sunday. And um, I hope your families let you get a little chill in. See you next week.